Could there be repercussions for what took place last night on the blue brand of SmackDown on the USA Network? Also breaking news on the future and the massive backstage developments as concerns rumors and speculation online about Dean Ambrose and Shane McMahon. Apparently, apparently, we have not seen or heard the last time. We're going to dive deep into that during this very episode. Remember to share this video all over Twitter, X, Facebook, your friends, your girlfriends, your boyfriends. Share it over social media so you know that the brash and the brazen is here to fill you in on the latest, the greatest, and the newest. Ladies and gentlemen, right at the top of the video, we're not going to waste any of your valuable time. Becoming a channel member is very vital and very crucial to this channel's development or a super thanks donation below. Now, <clears throat> we're going to kick it off with what we got last night on SmackDown. And what we got last night on SmackDown was the Viper Randy Orton confronting the game Triple H. Now, you see, there's a lot more to the story because you see during that promo, Triple H said, well, had Randy Orton actually shown up early and shown up to work at the time he was supposed to be here and not shown up late, maybe they could have discussed this thing backstage. But you see, they didn't really dive into that. But according to the dirt sheets, the websites, and the newsletters, this thing is being actually looked at a little bit more into as it concerns the Viper, Randy Orton. Now, this is something we really didn't discuss in the last video because more details have come out now. Although Triple H kind of went light, on Randy Orton because, again, the game is not one you in the old Triple H when he was the wrestler, when he was the game, when he was the cerebral assassin. If you called him out, obviously he would have addressed it and he would have said it live on the air. But now that Triple H is in a position of power, the, you know, a lot of different things have changes. There's a lot of different moving pieces. There's a lot of different parts now to the game Triple H and the way he conducts business and the way that he goes about being the game in 2024. So when Randy Orton called out Triple H, it probably wasn't the greatest, best move. But according to those in the know, <clears throat> there may be an angle that's going to be progressing here because Kevin Owens, you know, Triple H did say during this promo that Kevin Owens is not the same. He's got a different look. He's got a different aura. The look in his eye isn't what he's used to, and he's trying to actually protect Randy Orton. Now, you're telling Randy Orton that you're being protected. Now, Randy Orton, a man that has taken out legends and icons and Hall of Famers, and this is Triple H telling this to Randy Orton. So in the coming weeks, in the coming days perhaps, in the coming weeks, we could see a development where Triple H himself gets attacked, where Kevin Owens just goes absolutely insane, where Kevin Owens loses it. And again, a lot of rumors and a lot of speculation about exactly what Kevin Owens is going to do next. Just what is Kevin Owens going to do to Randy Orton at WWE Crown Jewel? That is yet another um, story that could hugely advance here. So make no mistake about that at the end of the day. Also, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is Randy Orton going to have to pay some repercussions? Is there going to be a situation with Randy Orton calling out Triple H? Because again, Triple H was not too favorable of being called out by Randy Orton. Now, a lot of people did not anticipate or expect Randy Orton to do such a thing, but he wants his hands on Kevin Owens so bad, so much. We could see a different stance in Kevin Owens. We may be seeing a Kevin Owens we have never, ever seen in WWE history. We may be seeing a side of Kevin Owens that you probably didn't even know existed because if Triple H is saying he's getting a different character of Kevin Owens, he's getting a different look, Kevin Owens' eyes are really telling a true story. But, of course, Randy Orton isn't going to be scared. Randy Orton is going to, isn't going to back down from that. Now, also, another huge storyline that we've got to pay attention to in rumors and news and headlines and speculation and gossip and hearsay is the following. Remember to subscribe and become a channel member today. And remember to like and interact and intersect. Now, we got the bloodline together. we got Jimmy Uso, Jey Uso. we got Roman Reigns. And obviously now the brand warfare, the draft lottery, the brand extension doesn't mean a damn right now. It's irrelevant, especially going into the Survivor Series. You've got Raw guys teaming up with SmackDown guys. SmackDown guys teaming up with Raw guys, NXT. I mean, it's as if, it's as if there isn't even a draft right now. But concerning the big storyline with the bloodline in WWE right now, we are seeing how this thing is unfolding. We're seeing how it's growing. And we're seeing how the WWE is grasping the OG bloodline, the OTC, and the fake, some would say the fake, the knockoff bloodline on SmackDown to just who is the real bloodline? Who is really going to take over the WWE? And how is this all going to evolve? Well, obviously, you see the WWE are adding chapters. They're adding different um, looks to this feud and, and, and this rivalry. 
and what this is going to do, it's going to build up the future of the WWE. It's going to build up the guys like Tama Tunga, Tango Lo. It's going to build up the Solo Sokoas. It's going to build up the Jacob Fatus. It's going to give these guys, you know, something really memorable and something that is going to be remarkable because what could be remarkable here is this, is that it's still, still the bloodline right now are obviously the original bloodline, still outnumbered still outmatched. It's still three on four, three on five. No, God knows if the uh, fake bloodline, the knockoff bloodline, will even add any more members or superstars to their group. So obviously, you know, the, the rumors and the speculation is that by the Survivor Series, Paul Heyman will be in there. But as we all know, Paul Heyman is not an active wrestler. He is nothing more than a mouthpiece. He is a manager, which is still vital, still an important part. But you need something bigger. You need a wrestler. You need a star. You need somebody to add to that in with what we're seeing with John Moxley in AEW, is this going to tie in with the whole bloodline situation? Now, we all know that Dean Ambrose is a part of a whole different group entirely called The Shield. Now, obviously, with what Dean Ambrose is dealing with as John Moxley in AEW, you're seeing exactly the um, monumental price that John Moxley is is making AEW pay for because now John Moxley is the AEW World Champion, and with uh, Shane McMahon and secret meetings and um, Shane McMahon being found and seen with different AEW wrestlers, different AEW entities, um, Shane McMahon wanting to uh, you know expand his horizons. Dean Ambrose obviously is on a collision course to doing something different and something drastic. According to sources, something drastic is about to take place between WWE and AEW. And what could be more drastic than John Moxie, Dean Ambrose joining in uh, with WWE to help out Roman Reigns and help out the establishment, so to speak. So obviously this is one of those things that could take on a life of its own. And from where I'm coming from, from when I'm sitting this is the only company, AEW and WWE at current day, in this current day, is the only company to not work together and open up that 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 forbidden door because WWE and WCW, I mean WWE and ECW did it for a time back in the nineties. Uh, we even see we are even seeing right now WWE and TNA work together. So why can't WWE and AEW work together? Maybe it's egos, maybe it's business, maybe it's money. Maybe it's contracts, contract tampering, buyouts. All different things are on the line. All, you know, all things considered, it's all on the table. According to sources, it's all on the table. If it's right for business, if it's right for money, it's what the fans want to see. They want to see Dean Ambrose back as John Moxie. They want to see him join Roman Reigns. Also, if they can't get Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins is also being discussed to be added on to this thing. But Seth Rollins right now has a big issue to do with Bronson Reed, who a lot of people think that Bronson Reed is going to need that pivotal, that big victory uh, to get the job done to really, uh, you know, put Bronson Reed to that next level in his career, in his WWE future. So we're going to see where all that goes as well. Triple H warned Randy Orton again. There could be repercussions to Randy Orton with that warning, with that call out. Again, probably wasn't the smartest thing of Randy Orton to do. But Randy Orton, as we all know, is a volatile viper, and he can strike at a moment's notice. But as we all know, the game Triple H is also the cerebral assassin. Remember to subscribe. More to come from the brash one. Stay tuned.